talking about cultivating, developing, develop. It must be developed. It must be developed, a teachable spirit. And people don't believe that. You don't grow overnight. I, this, this generation, I heard a, 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 this guy talking, I stumbled upon it. He was saying, this generation, today, generation is so easily to get offended and get their feelings hurt. Then I heard we were somewhere, uh, me and my wife, and uh, we were somewhere, I think we were in J.C. Penney, and the guy that was checking me out said the same thing about this generation. I, and that, that wasn't a coincidence and it wasn't happenstance, but it is. Why are we so easy to be offended and get our feelings hurt? Are we intact? How many times have I stood up here and said spirit, soul, and body? Which one is the real you? And we have said spirit. But why is our feelings and emotions ruling instead of the spirit? And this is the culture. This is the culture that we're in. But just because that's the culture, I don't have to succumb to that. Because I'm going to be led. I've learned how to be led. I learned how to follow. And if you're going to be a good follower, uh, you can be led. If you're not going to... You're not going to be teachable. You're not going to be led. Nope. But it's true. God didn't let me hear that two times back to back for no reason. It's just what it is. But that ain't the way the kingdom operates. Jesus didn't get in his feelings like that. He was led. All right. Cultivating a teachable spirit. Cultivating, that means developing. Uh, a teachable spirit is a treasure. It's a treasure. Proverbs, let's go to Proverbs, first chapter. I'm going to teach on that, and we're going to move around on this. But I want you to hear me with the intent of having confidence in God's word. I'll be the first to tell you, I didn't have much confidence with God, and I didn't trust God. I had to learn to trust God. God, go, go up to one. I'm going to read down. God didn't, uh, God had to show me he could be trusted. I trust God now. And, and you can't be saved this long and still questioning God. But I know why. I know why. And you know why too. But it's time to change. What's going to be different this year than uh, last five years? What's going to be different? I can't answer that for you, but for me, I can, I can say for me, the Proverbs, the truth, obscurely express Maximus of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, to know skillful and godly wisdom and instruction, to know, and that word know means intimate, being intimate with it don't mean just having head knowledge. It means that you are knowledgeable and you intimate with the inner workings. That means you know why. A lot of us just know his scripture and we'll learn to quote scripture, but you don't really know it until you use it. Then you will know what you didn't know. To know skillful, skillful, when you know and become intimate, you become skillful. How many skillful believers you run into? I'm saying I can do anything. Uh, this church said they can do anything. This church said they can do anything. Somebody wrong. God's word didn't say all that. To know skillful and godly wisdom and instruction. Wow. Wait a minute. That's to know. That's inter intimacy. I never knew you depart from me. That means Jesus said we've never been intimate before. All right? Skillful, that's two. Three, godly wisdom, that's three, and instruction. That's four things up there. To know, skillful, become skillful, and you use godly wisdom and instruction. To discern. 
Now, I'm going I'm to help somebody. People say, well, I have a discerning spirit. No, the Holy Spirit is a discerning. You don't have that. As a pastor, I had this before I was starting to pastor. I knew who I could hang around and who I shouldn't be around. And I go where I'm tolerated. I don't go where I'm tolerated now. I go where I'm celebrated. That ain't many places. So I don't go many places. Not, not because I can't. I don't want to. See, it's a different with me. I'm, uh, see, what floats your boat don't float my boat. This is why you got to be careful with trying to get people to do things. What satisfies me sitting under my garage listening to uh, uh, gospel music and looking at the squirrels and sitting out there meditating does my soul beautifully. Well, other people got to be doing this, doing that. I don't have to do that. I'm fine. I know what's in the world. I done been out there. And, and it's just, I don't have to do a lot of things to feel uh, complete. When God came into my life, that fixed it. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm complete in my life right now. I'm good until he get me off of this earth. I don't have to do a lot. Come on, come on. To know skillful and godly will and instruction to discern and comprehend the words of understanding and insight. Do we, and, and I'm going to tell you something. I've seen so many people take the word of God out of context because we don't know. Please leave that back up there. If we don't know how to receive the instruction. We don't know how to discern or comprehend the words in the Bible. I've seen people take the word and place them all over the place, and we are left. See, when you take the word out of context, y'all, you left is with the con. You've been conned because you don't know how to discern. And I'm going to say this, and don't, don't please don't, don't, don't take this the wrong way. The Holy Spirit told me something the other day. He said, most of the stuff you say, people don't understand. Holy Spirit told me that. So that's why I repeat myself, because one person can hear it one way. Another person can hear it another way. And so it's got to be said multiple times, and I understand that. I remember in times past, years ago, where I would teach something and we get new people in and the Holy Spirit had me to go back and teach. And I've looked in the faces of the people who've been there forever and day, they were getting disgusted. Like, we need, we, 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 we done heard that before. We need something else. And he's teaching the same old stuff. But they forgot about this new person came in. See how selfish folk are? They don't know how to discern her. That's what I'm trying to tell you. God was telling me they didn't understand. This new person, that new person, and this new person ain't heard it. You have. Sit quietly and let's bring them others up to speed. No, because it's about you. This ain't no me, church. That's what I hate. And God hates it because this ain't you. It's somebody ain't heard it. And you ain't mature enough and don't have a discerning spirit to let the people get up to speed. But I think it's competition and we don't want them up to speed. God said they do. They, and, and he said they didn't understand. I know they didn't because God said it. It's sad. Now, I, God, I'm, I, I work for God, so God helped to point this stuff out to me. Receive instruction. Listen, to discern and comprehend the words of understanding and insight. And if they could discern and comprehend, they would have said, Pastor, dealing with the new people. They didn't ever say that. They were getting about, I know more than him. That's what the churches I have come down to, competition. And that God ain't in them. That's Satan's spirit when we try to compete. See, see? Now, to receive instruction. In wise behavior and discipline, discipline of wise thoughtfulness, righteousness, and justice, and integrity. Hold on now. To receive instruction in wise behavior. Now, if you in foolish behavior, you ain't finna be disciplined. No, because you ain't in wise behavior. Every time you try to correct somebody and they get offended, they're not teachable. That's, sign, that's the first sign of me. Is unte I know unteachable. You're unteachable. Ain't going to try to teach somebody that unteachableness that you are dealing with. And the discipline of the wise, listen, the discipline of wise, you, see, wise people are disciplined. 
thoughtfulness, your thoughtful righteousness, justice, and integrity. This is what people get from you. They don't get mean mug, and they don't get an attitude. They get this. They, 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 you become thoughtful about people. You care more about people than you do yourself. And you have God's righteousness on display. And you use justice with everybody. God didn't give me what I deserve, so I can be lenient and patient with you. I can be lenient because God was patient with me. Everything ain't going to get fixed overnight. But here, this is me. When I teach something over and over, and I see you still won't do it, or won't study, I say, read this, and you won't, you're unteachable. Well, I forgot. You're unteachable. You hadn't, you hadn't developed a, a, a behavior of obeying, read this. Let's talk about it. When you don't, what is that telling God? You hadn't cultivated a teachable spirit. That's on, that's on you. That's not on God. That's on God. So all this, I just want to show you, and before we get in that booklet, it ain't going to do no good if we don't surrender. That's the first thing. We got to surrender. You got to give God your heart. You, God got to be the apple of your eye. And if you got unfinished business in the world, then you still ain't surrender. I don't have no more business out there. Now, the Bible said uh, we in the world, but don't be a part of the world. What you mean? Don't use this way of doing things. Don't use the system that it use. Don't lie. Don't steal. That's the way the world works, right? Okay, don't do that. And if you lie and you steal and you false for five stuff, what system are you using? Okay, then. All right. I'm in the world, but I don't play by them rules. I play by this. And the world can't handle that. They can't handle that. So when you become wise and skillful, this is what you're going to do. You're going to be disciplined. You're going to become wise. You're going to become thoughtful. And you're going to use your righteousness not to, uh, uh, to gloat over people, but people can look at you and you, you can uh, be something that they can look at and help because you are a living epistle. Justice, you're going to be fair to everybody. And you're going to have integrity about yourself. That prudence, listen, good judgment, you're going to have good judgment. Astute, common sense. And a lot of people, I know a lot of educated, I'm talking about real educated. I ain't talking about people just making straight A. I'm talking about jokers that went off the chart. Uh, uh, super duper cum laude, it ain't even on there. And couldn't even change a flat. Couldn't figure it out. I'm talking about, we know him. Big cat knew this stuff. I mean, the man was smart. But he couldn't figure out how to change his own flat. And no common sense. No. But in the books, academically, he was off the chart. Couldn't deal with it. He was a brainiac. Listen, common sense may be given to the naive or inexperienced who are easily misled. Wait, would you see this? That's the church. The church, it, it, this guy that I used to know, uh, he was a con artist, and, and he, he was real good at tricking people. He, he said, clear man, you know, uh, there's a sucker born every minute. He wasn't lying. I paid attention to that. And he could con people. Because just off that principle, he know people are naive and they looking for something for nothing. And that's how they got con. And people in the church, they want everything God said on a silver platter with no effort at all given. That word, curse word, it's a, with curse, it, that word, work is a curse word in the church. Ain't it? Look at society. You in managing position, how many people want to work? Curse word. Curse word. Nobody want to work. I ain't just figured that out. I've been saying that ever since I got saved. That is a curse word among the black people. We want something given to us. It don't work like that. It don't. Come on. Listen. It says that prudence, good judgment, astute common sense may be given to the naive. Yes, a naive person need, com need, need common sense and inexperience who are easily misled. Listen, and knowledge 
and discretion, intelligent discernment to the youth. Just because you young, it's too many people around here saying, well, I, I was young and I made a mistake. That wasn't no mistake. There wasn't no mistake. Now, don't have me to go to Romans 3 where the Bible says our conscience was a law to us. I was young. No, you knew what you were doing. You know having intercourse or get a baby. That ain't no mistake. The child is not a mistake. That was purposely planned out. That is not a mistake. I ain't never said the foolishness that I was doing was a mistake. Because I already had made it up in my heart. This is what I wanted to do. And it blew up in my face. You know when we say it's a mistake? When it don't work out in our favor. Because if God had to let it work out, you would have said, man, I know something. Yeah, I bet you. That's why it blew up in your face. I'm glad God let that mess blew up in mine. Come on. All right. The wise will hear. Jesus said, I would liken you to a wise man. That hear thee. Jesus, I'm going to compare you to me if you hear and obey. We said we Christ like. I ain't using that word no more. Uh, uh, Christian, I said disciple. That's what I'm going to be saying. That word Christian is a derogatory term because Jesus didn't act like that. Everybody's a Christian now. And I used to say in the 90s, are you a lying Christian? Are you a stealing Christian? What kind of Christian? What Christian? That ain't no Christian. I said, that's exactly. Jesus didn't do none of that. <laughs> the wise will hear and increase in learning and the person of understanding will acquire wise counsel uh, a person of understanding gonna go to somebody can help them people who are not wise they're gonna side with people who think just like them they get deep in trouble we're gonna talk about Solomon in a little bit Solomon uh, David had died Solomon was in uh, it had been inaugurated as king and Solomon uh, son uh, uh, David's son, advisors, David people, because even king had wise people around them. And they went to Solomon and said, King, your, uh, no, I got it backwards. It was Solomon advisors went to Solomon's son. Yeah, there we go. And they said, look, Solomon put it on these people. He overworked them. And they want to know, if you, lo if you lighten the load, don't put that heavy burden on these people like uh, your daddy did. The advisors told them these people will serve you. Okay, Jeroboam, if I'm not mistaken. He went and consulted with people his age who saw no further than him on the same plateau. <laughs> what y'all think? Put it on them, man. I wear them out, bro. So Jeroboam went back and told him about, no, I'm going to put it on. I'm going to make their burden more heavy. Split the kingdom. That's how the kingdom got split. What if he had to listen to Sol uh, David, I mean Solomon advisors? What, he had, what if he had to listen to those wise men? See, a lot happens because of disobedience. And God knows how disobedient you're going to be. So he have to orchestrate your life in the disobedience and work, still work the plan out that he put you here for. So a lot of this stuff ain't mistakes. This is flat out disobedient. And the, more, the, the quicker we realize that, the better off we'll be. Okay? Listen, the wise will hear and increase their learning. You, go, you don't just hear. I got ears to hear and you ain't increasing. Now, I know what the words say. I, I'm telling you, I see it just the way God see it. And the person of understanding will acquire wise counsel and the skill to steer. Not only they like, what does it look like I'm steering uh, uh, your life and I can't steal mine? Ran into a guy. Man, I see you've been living way. Look how big you are. I said, you should have saw me. To them, I'm big. Man, look at look. Whoa, man, look at you. How big I used to be. But they say I'm big now. I'm not that big now. 
I know what to do to cut out everything. If I'm not disciplined in my eating, tells me everything. I can't overcome a donut. And I'm talking about I rebuke you, Satan. Satan will throw a, 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 a box of Monroe donuts at me, and I done sit down, foaming at the mouth. That ain't happening no more. No, if I want some candy, I eat the sugar-free that got stevia in it that won't spike my blood sugar. See, my oldest brother went to the hospital uh, New Year's Eve, and from my understanding, he's still there. Congestive heart failure. He done had pacemaker. His kidneys done went out all because he won't change his eating habits. Okay. My mama said, you with that name and claim it, S-H-I-T. I'm just telling you what she told. You're going to get diabetes because it's in the family. I ain't on medicine. I ain't on nothing but the word. Hello. <laughs> because I made up my mind back in the 90s. I'm not going to follow what they follow with. So I had a plan. I said, I'm going to stay heavy as long as I can. I'm going to eat up what I want to eat. But when I hit this age, no, nobody knew I had that plan but me and God. I said, when I get this age, I'm going to cut it all out and go back. I got a 42 bet on. Now when I started pastoring, I was a 34. And just, Dad, what's wrong? You ain't nothing wrong. Yet. I said, long when I was a potato digging, field thrashing, like my daddy used to say, <laughs> I'm healthy. Why do black people think when you lose, get healthy weight, you're something wrong? Everybody got to be big and huge. No, I'm disciplined. That's what time it is. The wise will hear and increase in learning and the person of understanding will acquire wise counsel. A person of understanding is going to seek out wise people and the skill to steer his course wisely and lead others to the truth. The way you drive your life going to run people from the truth or it's going to lead them to the truth. They see that. They see that. Now, listen. Teachability is not so much about competence. Being teachable is not so much about competence in a mental capacity, mental capacity, as it is about attitude. The reason why a lot of people ain't teachable because they got a stank attitude. Did I say something wrong? I've been pastor for 30 plus, and I done seen them all. Can't teach black people. It ain't just black people, because I was talking to this lady in Walmart. I had an old lady. She belonged to this church in Byron, a nice church, large church. And she said, we take people in, and they die in the pews. I said, it ain't just y'all church. It's every church. It ain't no different. In I talked to white pastors. They said, man, y'all people take care of y'all. Our pastors, the church won't do nothing for a white pastor. I said, man, what planet did you come off of? A guy told me a preacher ain't got no business with nothing. He said, you, you deserve a tow up. He saw that nobody was riding there. What you doing with all that muscle car? Yeah, the preacher don't deserve nothing like that. I said, if I was riding in a covered wagon with a horse, it'd be good. Yeah. That's just the nature of it. That's just people, y'all. I'm, I'm. But, but going here, it's an attitude. How's your attitude? How's your attitude? We well, you know the old saying, the attitude will determine the altitude. It is a desire to listen and apply. It's a desire to listen, learn, then apply. I was getting it wrong. It's a desire to listen, learn, and apply. In that order. Listen, learn, and apply. If your attitude is bad, ain't nobody going to be able to tell you nothing. It is the hunger to discover and grow. Wait a minute. Jesus said, he who is hungry and thirst after righteousness, like a deer pants for the water, thirsty for the water. You got to be hungry for God. So if whatever you're hungry for, that's what you're going to be most intrigued by. Yeah. And look at the church. Prosperity, ain't nothing wrong with God, want to prosper you. Ain't nothing wrong with prosperity. But when that's all you want, 
God ain't no fool. God know you're just trying to coerce something out of him. He know if you love him or you're just trying to use him. God knows that. Amen. And that's what people do. I remember I started pastoring. This guy said, man, I'm coming to church because I want God to bless me with a leather jacket. And he came. I, don't, I hadn't seen him. He came a long time ago. I just started to pass. And uh, I don't know if God gave him the leather jacket. I'm like, coming just because of a leather jacket? Ain't that how people think? If we are God's children, he is your father. What do a father do? He provides. But if you ain't surrendered, the prodigal son had to surrender. But what did he do? He used the wealth of his inheritance. And God know the people who get a lot of money in their hands, you don't change money, just bring all that stuff out. What did the prodigal son do? He bought prostitutes. What did the average young man do with a lot of money? He going to buy women. He bought his friends women, and he did all of that, and he got broke. And his friends left him. A famine came. You no, know, it's a famine already out there. Reason why I won't go near famine, because I'm, I'm, I'm in him. Famines are out there. It was out there when I was living apart from God. One day, everything was drying up. But when I found him, things began to spring to life. I, know, I ain't going back. I'm not going back to the word. Y'all can say that. I know that. Solomon, I mean, uh, David, not David, but Paul never went back to beating Christians. Do y'all see this? To understand a proverb, a figure, a speech, or an enigma, a riddle, people talk to you in riddle and rhyme. They ain't going to tell you the whole truth. So I can't give people, you probably told me wrong. You, you lied to me. Tell me the truth. You are, I gave you counsel off the lie you told. And they're like, how you know I was lying? Didn't I give you a lie? Well, you can't do that. Yes, I can. You started it by not being you want the truth? Give the truth so somebody can line the scriptures up and give you the right answer. But most people are not going to do that. They not. I know that. So to understand a proverb and a figure of a speech or an enigma with its interpretation and the words of the wise and their riddles that acquire reflection. Now, uh-uh, let's go, go on to 4, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. I'm just setting this lesson up because we got to become teachable. We got to become teachable. We got to become teachable, y'all. It is the hunger to discover and grow. It is the willingness to learn the unlearn. How are we willing to unlearn the unlearn? We're not. We can't. A lot of people are not going to let go of that stuff. You get a job, you go to that job with the same mentality. And you, they, you got fired at job one, you go to job two, you get fired. You go to job three and you ain't figured out you can't do what you did <laughs> on job one. God said, man, you know they let me go, don't you? I said, they did. I was coming off lunch break, he was leaving. I said, he punched out. Man, they let me go. I said, was it because you were late all the time? Or, uh, you, you know, I, I know you, you wasn't, but could, that could have been. Because you, you you're the hardest work in there. Why would they let a value employee, employee go like that? Man, you overachieved on this job. I'm messing with him because already he, he got fired because of his behavior. Now, I'm just poking at him because, man, why would they let go of a valuable man like you? They need you, man. You got bad with him. But I said, let me help you. Let me help you. You fired yourself. Them folk ain't against you. They was getting your bad spirit in here rubbing off on the other employee. I seen so many people working on jobs talking about slow down. You got to pace yourself. Holy Spirit said, ask them if they had a company and one employee would like them telling all his workers to do what they doing. You're like, you ready to fight me. I said, wait a minute. You on this job telling people to slow down. You said you say. And yet if you had a company, you would be hot if somebody told your workers to ride the clock on you and let them foot the bill. How would you feel? You own a business? If you did it, it's going to happen to you. Really? Oh, it ain't? Watch. 
get a business and watch how they railroad you like you did your employer. See, the law of reciprocity. If you're going to learn, if you're going to be skillful and learn, learn to treat people because you never know where God going to have you. You never know what going to happen. And the very way you treated people is the way you're going to get treated back. I like God. Nobody gets away. So yeah, all that riding the clock that you were doing, <laughs> how you feel you footing the bill? They ain't got to go behind them and do the work. How you feel about that? Huh? All right, my son and daughters, pay attention to my word and be willing to learn. What, what, I, what I wrote here, it says right here, it's a willingness to learn the unlearn and relearn. It is what you learn after you knew it. That's the problem. You, don't, you didn't understand what I just said. What I just said, it is what you learn after you know it. What did you learn after you knew you didn't know? Because you thought you knew now, what you know now, now that you know, what did you learn? <laughs> if you ain't down, you ain't ready to learn. Get, do y'all understand what I just said? Now that you know, what did you learn after you knew it? Do you understand what I just said? So if you, won't, you ain't there, you ain't ready. My son, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my saying. I don't have an ear for the world anymore. When I had unfinished business out there, the world was calling me. It don't call me no more. My number been changed. <laughs> Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the center of your spirit. You want to be teachable in your spirit? Then you got to keep the word in the center of it. When there's other things in the center of your heart, it fights and competes with the first place. For well, they are life to those who find them and healing and health to all their flesh. Now, what, what, what is this right here? Is this King James Amplified? Amplified what? Classic? All right. Listen, put away from you deceitful lying. What have you learned about lying? A liar think lying will get him out of trouble. God ain't going to let you get away with lying because he don't want you to develop a pattern in it. It's good that you got bust out so you can know that line ain't going to get you nowhere. Come on. Come on, you're not teachable if you got the line. Misleading mouth. Told you people not going to be honest with you. Put devious lips far from you. What do that mean? Do y'all know what that mean? If you don't, I need to explain it. Well, how, how can people be deceptive and devious? Saying one thing and meaning totally something else. This is how some people are. Man, they'll say something like, so-and-so, so-and-so. Man, I was just playing. No, they wasn't playing. You better hear what they said the first time. That was their way of trying to tell you what they really wanted to tell you. But then they had players. No, they're not. I had people used to come up to me. Uh, Pastor, you know, you're a good person. You this and that. But, uh-uh, I, I scratched all that back. Come on. Now, this is what you really think. Now, I'm going to tell you what I think. I ain't thinking this. I know this from observing your behavior. Well, you have to come at me like that. You started it. Why do people, no mind. <laughs> no mind. <laughs> Let your eyes look what? Directly ahead. Why? Toward the path of more courage. Let your eyes, let your, let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. Toward the path. What, what, what the world promote? Not this. Not this. Not this. Consider well and watch carefully the path. 26, come on. The path of your feet. Uh, the path of your feet. In all your ways, be steadfast and sure. In all your ways. So if you're going to, in all your ways, be steadfast and sure, don't you need to be taught in all ways? Do not turn away to the right nor to the left where evil may lurk. Turn your foot from the path of evil. Psalms 1 will tell you that. But now, let's go to, prop, let's go to uh, I'm going over here where God was hitting me. We were riding Friday somewhere, and the Holy Spirit went to teaching me uh, about the lesson. He said, add this scripture in here. It, it was, I was going to use it as a base but he didn't tell me to use it as my base scripture, but I'm going to interject it in here now. 
uh, Acts 16 chapter, please. Acts 16 chapter. This is uh, Paul. Acts 16 chapter. And let's uh, pick it up at the sixth verse. I'm going to skip through here and I'm going to get uh, to where I need to be. Now, when they had gone, when they had passed through the territory of uh, Ferga uh, and Galata, after being forbidden by what? The Holy Spirit uh, won't always lead you into easy places, like a yellow brick road. Then God lead them through the wilderness, by the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, to do what? To test them to see. Would they obey? How many got in the promised land? Not many. Because <laughs> they couldn't follow. They weren't teachable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, the worst thing not to be teachable is you got an example in front of you. Didn't they see God's power in Egypt? Didn't they see Pharaoh drown in his army? Didn't they see uh, Egyptian cows die? Didn't Pharaoh's son die? Didn't all that happen? And they still couldn't believe. All right. Holy Spirit, to speak the words, listen. Forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the words in the West Coast province of Asia Minor. After they came to Mysa, they tried to go in Bithynia, uh, and but the Spirit of Jesus did not. What would you hear? The Holy Spirit is has the Spirit of Jesus. He was a man. Notice it had the man Jesus there. Christ is the anointed. See, it's the Spirit of Jesus. Spirit of Jesus. Notice that. A man could obey. A man humbled himself. A man was teachable. Did not permit them. Holy Spirit have told me not to go place. And I went on anyway. Get like to die. So, so passing by Misa, they went down to Toad. The vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man from the Roman province of Macedonia was standing and pleading with him, saying, come over to Macedonia. Help us. Help us, help us. And when they had, when he had seen the vision, we concluding Luke, this is Luke, uh, tried to go into Macedonia at once. Wait a minute. At once? See how quickly these men obeyed? When we, what, want to prolong it? Uh-uh, that ain't obedient. Delayed response to the word is disobedient. Okay. In the Macedonia, that one concluding that God has called us to preach, what? See that underlying gospel, okay? All right, underlying gospel. Let's ex expedite time. Let's go to the uh, 18 verse. Now, what happened? This woman with a spirit of divination in her was following Paul and Silas after they got there. Said these two men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way unto salvation. All right, Paul being grieved at this woman, he rebuked that spirit out of her. All right, now they mad with it. Listen, she continued doing this for several days. Then Paul, being greatly annoyed and worn out turned and said to the spirit inside of her. Did he say it to the woman? And the church got to learn to say it to the spirit that's in that person. But we want to attack the person. I ain't attacking the person. I know spirits. And one thing about it is you, if you stay here long enough, you're going to learn when the spirit ain't like God, it's an evil spirit. And then you can say in the name of Jesus, shut up and come out. You can say that if you're walking in obedience. You can say that because the word will work on your lips just like it did Jesus. Hello? Yeah, we don't believe that. We, we still don't want that. We, uh, and see, I know this because I ain't scared to speak. Then Paul being great little no, worn out. He was wore out. And we like getting wore out, don't we? Don't we? just got to tolerate it. No, ain't no church tell nobody to tolerate that stuff turned and said to the spirit inside of her, I command you in the name of Jesus. As is, 
See, if you represent him, you can do this. But when you part time, <laughs> when you part time Jesus and full time Satan, you got a full time job and a part time job. All right, that don't work like that. Come out of her, and it came out that very moment. See that? Now watch this. But when our owners, she had people, they were making money off this, that their hope of profit, listen, was gone. They seized Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities in the marketplace. That's where they held court at, in the town square, in front of everybody. Come on, watch this. Watch this. Where trials were held. Twenty. And when they had brought them before the chief magistrates, they said, listen, this is where God hit me. Just wanted to fill you in. But this is what God said to me right here, and I want you to hear this. These men who are Jews, God's chosen people, are throwing our city into confusion. Now, what were they sent there to do? Preach the... Okay. All right, I want, I want you to hold on to that now. They're throwing our city into confusion and causing trouble just by preaching the gospel. That happens today. That's why a lot of people don't want that. They don't want that. Then Luke 4 and 18, what did Jesus came to do? What, what did he say he came to do? Did they get high with it? Or did they try to kill it? Okay then. So that, that's causing trouble. Man, how dare you to tell me I ain't got to be blind and sick and poor? They're going to find a preacher to tell them exactly they can be poor, blind, miserable, but you on your way home. Make him pass. That's what, they, that's what they want. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. Listen, they were publicly teaching customs which are unlawful for us. Now, this is what God was saying. Why is the word of God unlawful to people who say they believe in God? and get upset and get offended. This is why they got offended because they say he's pushing uh, uh, their customs on us being Romans. It's unlawful for us to do this. And God said, that's what the church is today. I heard it. I told my wife, she was driving. I said, God is preaching to me. <laughs> I heard it. This is where we at right here. So if the word is causing confusion in your house, and teaching the word is supposed to straighten out the house. It don't supposed to cause trouble in the church, but it does. People get offended, and they are publicly teaching customs that are unlawful for us as believers. To accept or observe. Now, that centurion soldier said, Jesus, he was a Roman soldier. Don't come under my house. I know if you speak the word, it's going to happen. I'm a man under authority too. But all Romans, Paul was a Roman himself. Now, what do that tell you? Is the word of God unlawful? Let's talk about it. The word of God said on shack. What do believers do? Are, are, are they unteachable? The word of God said, marry before you carry. Is that unlawful to the church? Yeah, to, to, yeah, to some, to the unteachable one. Homosexuality don't offend me. And I told one person, I hope my heterosexual don't offend you with being gay. Because I ain't toning it down to make you feel good about your mess. I'm not doing it. Now, I'm not beating you up. You can be saved if you want to get saved because I done tried to save, and that's, and that's what I'll do. But if you just want to continue like that, no, if you stay here, you're going to mislead somebody. We can't, uh-uh. You can come as you are, but you ain't going to stay as you are. No, 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 no. And they tried to pass that law in California the way they're trying to get the Bible to be stopped and not taught anymore. We're heading for them days. They coming. See what's happening in California? You see it keep happening, don't you? I wouldn't want to live in California. God got me planted right where I need to be. I'm okay with where I'm at. I'm okay. I don't want to go nowhere but where I'm at. So y'all see, 
How is the word of God unlawful to you? What is it saying that you don't want to change? Why hadn't you changed? So is that a sign that is unlawful to you? Because you ain't changed. Come on now, the word said don't and you do. The word of God said quit and you keep going. Are you teachable? No, you're not. No, you're not. Moving along, I just wanted to throw that in there. So we see that, right? All right. So if you stop learning, you stop leading. Let me bag up. It is the hunger to discover and grow. Are you hungry to discover and grow? Or you just want to learn the word to talk about it? A willingness to learn the unlearn and relearn. Willingness to unlearn, to learn and unlearn and relearn. You got to learn and unlearn and relearn. Them three things got to happen. You got to be willingness to learn and get rid of the, uh, uh, the stuff that you did that you thought you knew and it wasn't right. You got to get rid of that. And relearn the stuff you thought you knew. It is what you learn after you knew it. After you learn what you learn after you knew it. After you knew it, what did you learn? You got to get it. So if you stop learning, you stop leading. If you ain't never start learning, you ain't begin to lead in the right way. You're causing people to stumble and fall. But if you re remain teachable, you never stop leading. The most important skill to acquire is learning how to learn. And what I found out, all over in the church, people don't know how to learn to learn. Did, I, did you understand what I just mean? Don't open the Bible with your college mind. Most people think because they got a... a a high grade point average that they can read the Bible. No, you can't. <laughs> you don't love God enough, he ain't finna reveal his word to you. That's one thing I know. And, and God has always told me, he said, people will never pick up. I was sitting right here. He said, people will take my Bible, read it, and declare themselves to know the word. But he said, they will never pick up a book about uh, 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 chemistry, the human anatomy, and study and go up to the university and try to put, do surgery on somebody. I was sitting right there. I was under Pastor Williams when he said that. And I, he said, most people that take that Bible, study the script, and go to cutting on people. Right there. My word is sharper than a two-edged sword. It won't cut, you won't let it cut you, but you're trying to dice and help somebody else. Holy Spirit. So I've never seen somebody read a book on dentistry and go open up a dentist prayer. I've seen people take that Bible and go try to start a church with it. And God ain't want them to do that. If that Bible is the only book, if I wasn't called to do this, I wouldn't be doing it. Because everybody can't do it. Last thing I wanted to do. So are we, are we clear right here? All right, listen. The most important skill to acquire is learning, how to learn. You must pursue teachability. The most important skill to acquire is learning how to learn. We must, I say we, and I'm still learning, we must pursue teachability. Write these, write these things down right here. I got some things I want you to write down. Listen. And that's the one thing. Number one, learn to listen. It takes two to speak the truth. Learn to listen. It takes two to speak the truth. One to speak and one to hear. Learn to listen. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Learn to listen. It takes two to speak the truth. One to speak the truth and one to hear the truth. Number two, understand the learning process. Do I need to go back to one again because I repeat myself. Learn to listen. It takes two to speak the truth. One to speak and one to hear. Number two, the understanding, understanding the learning process. All right? 
I got four things in this learning process. Number two, got four little, little nuggets to it, the process. Number one, act on what you're learning. Put it in action. Number two, look for your mistakes. I hate, I'm just going to put it that with being nice right there. <laughs> look, can, you can put sin, look for where you jacked it up at. <laughs> you can put that there. And evaluate, that's two, and evaluate. Evaluate where you messed up at. Search for a way to do it better. Search for a way, number three, search for a way to do it better. Search for a way to do it better. Number four, go back to step one. Repeat the process all over again. This stuff ain't hard, y'all. It's not hard. It's not hard. All of us are born not knowing. Nobody was born in this earth knowing anything. The first teachers we had in our life was our parents, good or bad. Good or bad, you were bent with what you learned from growing up in your parents' house by watching them. Sorry, that's good, good or bad. You learned that. Deuteronomy 5 and 9, if I'm not mistaken. Deuteronomy 5 and 9, let's see. I got a scripture here. Yeah, 5 and 9. Pull that up, Tina. So, what you learned from your parents, if they wasn't, 100% godly in obedience to God, you learned some stuff. But whatever was going on in that house, your family, you, you got married and you carried that stuff. Your children learned what you did and showed them when they were small. I'll tell any parent, don't get mad and go off on your child because that's learned behavior. They saw you do it. You shall, uh, uh, Deuteronomy 5 and 9, 5th chapter, 9th verse. Deuteronomy 5th chapter, 9th verse. So, by growing up in a house and you saw mom and daddy, your first teacher was your mother because she the first one had you close. And that's where, that's where people are taught, nursing at their mother's breast, have been taught hate, bigotry, and a whole bunch of stuff. Where the mother is then putting that stuff in those children's head. And then they're watching the mother or the daddy and they learning this stuff. And I'm going to say this right off the bat. If your mama was unteachable, you're going to be unteachable. You pretty much going to be unteachable too. Now you got a choice in the matter. But if your daddy was unteachable, you're going to be unteachable. Pretty much. But you still got a choice. You don't have to be unteachable. You don't have to be. Everybody got a choice. Come on. Come on, you shall, is that it? All right, you shall not worship them or observe them, for I am the Lord your God, am jealous and passionate, and God demanding what is rightfully and uniquely mine, visiting, here we go, that's the part, right here. Visiting and avenging the iniquity, sin, guilt of the fathers of the children that is calling the children to account for the sins of their father to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. There it is right there. I taught this. If, if, if homosexuality is in a family and that child witnessed that, it's going to pretty much, they're going to be bent there. They're going to be bent to follow that. They got a choice in it. So don't say, my, you shouldn't do this and that. Think about did the child see you do it. Don't get mad because you didn't know. But you should have knew what you were doing in front of the children were going to have ramifications on it. So that's why I tell people, be patient with them children. Don't get mad because they're not, because they saw a lot. And you'll be surprised at what your children saw. And we don't want to see that part, but don't expect them to do something that you didn't do because it's learned behavior. That's why I'm patient with CJ. Because I sit and told him, and he, and he, got, my, he got my nature, so I already know how he's going to be. I already know how he's going. That's why I'm patient with him. I know what he's going to do. Do y'all see this? Let's go back to nine. Now, I want to get to the top of this verse again. Listen now. We need to understand this. You shall not worship them or, or serve them. What are you talking about these work, wicked people? For the Lord God am a jealous and am, am, am passionate God, demanding what is rightfully and uniquely his. God bought you with a price, didn't he? 
Well, why are we so hard to be teachable, y'all? Come on now. I'm, I'm saying if we are, it shouldn't take uh, uh, seven years. Paul wrote back to the Corinthian church. He said it should be some mature saints here by now. But see, the Spirit does that. The Spirit does the growing up, not you. Holy Spirit is the agent that worked in the believer that's yielded and surrendered. It ain't you. It ain't going to never be you. It ain't going to never be me. It's the work of God in your life. But we want to say it's us. No, it ain't you. You ain't powerful. The Holy Spirit is. I'm not powerful. I don't know jack squat unless what the Holy Spirit revealed to me. I want God to get all the glory. Amen. So y'all see that. So what, what, what your children saw. So listen, you got, you got to understand something. They saw this stuff. And you train them. You might hate to look at it that way, but that's why your children are a certain way because they saw how you did it. So the best thing is now that we change it, we can do it right. But don't get mad when they don't conform because they saw that first. Hello? We might as well wise up to this stuff. Listen, we are all born not knowing anything. And this is why I don't look up to uh, real talented people. Some I never, never have. I, I, I like to look at the gifts in people. And say God gave them that and God gave them that. Not jealous, not looking up to them, but acknowledging what God put in them. Now, here we go. Some of the most talented people, let me, let me say what a talent is. Singing. Singing is not a gift, it's a talent. Playing an instrument is a talent, it's not a gift. Teaching is a gift. Faith is a gift. Talents come from parents. Because the daddy a preacher don't mean the son going to be a preacher. <laughs> that ain't how they work. <laughs> Singing is gifted. Playing an instrument, gifted. Other things like that is gifted. So some of the biggest failures in this earth today are the most talented people you will ever, ever, ever could imagine. You know why they were failures? On the other hand, I've seen the less talented, and God was able to do so much through the less talented because they were teachable. An employee, or I mean an employer can notice this company, can know you are the, you're gifted, but can't nobody work with you. Everywhere you go, you start trouble. You got attitude. They rather have a teachable person that can do a squat of what you can and keep peace on the job. Y'all didn't hear me. Talented people, people that, that are real talent, you can't do nothing with them people. You look in the sports world. Look at all the people, some of the people who are the most talented. They want to practice. They won't do nothing but stay out and party. And he, we didn't have no respect for the coach. Real talented people. I'd rather take somebody can do just, just one thing real well and they're teachable and take that person somebody think they know everything. That's a headache. And God knows that. I done seen it happen. Just because you're talented don't mean somebody want to put up with that because they got to get all this rhetoric, all this mouth, attitude. Mm-mm. I've seen people get fired, and they'll take somebody lesser, and uh, when that mess left, it was just a peaceful thing in that area where that person got fired. Now they got somebody in there that's teachable, and it's a big difference. See, because that, that, you talented don't mean nothing. Some of the biggest failures. Did I say something wrong? Okay. All right. So, Listen. It's about becoming a disciple. Every person has a teachable spirit can mature spiritually. Every person that's teachable, that has a teachable spirit, can mature. Let's go to First Chronicle, please. Uh, 10. Let's go to First Chronicle. Uh, I'm sorry, Second Chronicle 10. 
Who was the wisest man, one of the wisest men after Jesus on this earth? Who was it? Solomon. What did Solomon ask for? What do we pray for? Hmm. Wisdom. Something I pray for. Something I continue to ask God to give me wisdom. I don't know how to pass. And I've told y'all this year after year, and I say it periodically, I don't know what I'm doing, but he do. He do. God know the hearts of all people. See, one thing I've learned about God, God showed me something about my second oldest brother and another guy who was at this church. They were plotting on me. God showed me. But I was too busy working, too busy cutting grass, and I was pastoring at the time. And God showed me. So I ended up getting... I had a situation going on with my health. It was, it might have, it was something. Doctor took me out of work, and I, lay, I was laying in the bed that day. And God said, since you're so busy, I can't talk to you. He said, now nah, I got you right where I want you. <laughs> now, God didn't allow that to happen to me. He allowed it, but he didn't do it to me. He took that opportunity when I worked myself down, and he said, now, the dream you had about these two guys, one of them was your brother, and the other one was this person. He said, I showed you what they were finna do, and you let it happen. Guess what? It ain't never happened to me again. I'm teachable. He said, you let that happen, because I warn you. Everything that go on in this church, I know it before it happened. You can say I don't, but I do. I just don't talk about it a lot. Don't have to. Because when God tell me something, I already know the outcome. God said, Great things. There's been six years now. Great things are ahead for this church. It's five years going into the sixth year. He said that before I married Michelle. I stood up in front of the church and said it. And people heard it with a deaf ear. Now, that ain't just talking about stuff. It's talking about wisdom. It's talking about a lot of things. It ain't just stuff. It ain't just stuff. And a lot of people... Ain't in position to get it. That's on you. It ain't like I didn't make it known. But I'm going to stay in position to get what I need to get. Second Chronicles, first chapter, and verse 10. You got to ask yourself, am I teachable? Ask yourself, do I get offended when somebody try to correct me? Are you argumentative when somebody tries to uh, uh, give you something? Can somebody sit down and discuss and have a decent conversation with you without you getting mad? What is that telling you? What is that telling you? You got it? All right. This is Solomon right here. All right, give me wisdom and knowledge so that I may go out and come in performing my duties before this people that Solomon was king of. Look at what God, that, that, that blessed God right there because he had a love for God's people. He had a love for God's people. He had a love for God's people. And when a man of God loves God's people, and he have the people best interest at heart, God will listen to that man. I know I have your best interest at heart. But when you don't care, what is that saying? That ain't got nothing to do with me. That ain't got a thing to do with me because the word of God is unlawful to some people. He teaching things we ain't careful to observe. Right over there in Acts. All right? That I may come, go, go out and come in performing my duty before these people. For otherwise, who can rule and administer justice to this great people of yours? Did y'all hear that? Now, it said God's people. Solomon said God's people. If God's people won't obey him, what chance do a man have? If you do God like that, what is a preacher looking for? Nothing. 
God replied to Solomon, because this was in your spirit. And you did not ask for riches, possessions, honor, and personal glory or the life of those who hate you. If God would ask us, what do you want from me? I've seen too many people, I've heard this in my saved life, and I heard it in my pastoring day. God going to get them. Look, look, listen, the first thing they would ask for, they would have a list of people. Get them, God. Listen. Or the life of those who hate you. Solomon didn't ask for his enemy's life. How many people would say, get them, Jesus? Come on now, you know you, you got to live. I knew God was going to get them for messing with me. Like God of Dome and Pitching or uh, 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 Dog. Sick him, Jesus. That, he don't work like that. I ask somebody, tell me, God going to get you. I say, well, look, look out because you'll be the first one he get. If he ain't got you, why he going to get me? Who hate you, nor have you asked for long life, but you have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself so that you may rule and administer justice to my people over whom I have made you king. That's the, best, that's the only prayer I pray. I don't pray for stuff. I don't pray for money. He told me to give. And, and if you want to be a millionaire, you're going to have to give. A, have you given a million dollars? Come on now. You know how many people playing the lottery? I was somewhere, and everybody, I went up to get, some, get something from the store. Everybody came in playing the lottery, playing the lottery. Man, you play, I don't play lottery. I don't do lottery. I'm in Christ. I give. So everybody want to, want to hit this big thing. I'm not taking a chance on giving, and it will be given. Giving, it will be given. That ain't playing the lottery. That's a giving. So... If you want to be a millionaire, then give a million. Uh oh. See, see, we ain't teachable in all there. Why are you expecting all that out of God and you won't give to that status? And now, I'm going back here. Now, watch this. Put that back up here. Now, wisdom and knowledge have granted, uh, wisdom and knowledge have, I been, have been granted to you. I will also give you what he wanted first. To have the knowledge to be able to walk right and live right and judge his people right. We don't want that. Because knowledge is not popular today. Not God's word, ain't. Because I hear a lot of this stuff, and I see why so many people confused and lost. Okay? Who were, listen, and I will also give you riches and possession and honor such as none of the other kings who were before you has possessed nor will those who come after you. Now, I want to show you what prompted this. Hold on, let me find it in my Bible so I can get teeth. Let me, let me show you what, what prompted uh, uh, God to ask Solomon this. Hold on, let me, let me flip over here. Because see, I pray for wisdom because I'm in a, I'm in a position where I want to teach and lead right. I ain't trying to mislead nobody. I'm not trying to do that. All right. Go to uh, Second Chronicles, six chapter. And I'm going to show you why God asked him this. Look at the first, look at the uh, second, second Chronicles 7 chapter, excuse me. Look at the first verse. Show you why God blessed him the way he did. Now when Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering. What burnt offering? And the sacrifices, Shekinah glory. People still talk about Shekinah glory because they stuck in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit is in you. I don't need no cloud. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is in me. That group, Shekinah Glory, was so popular because of this right here. 
Talking about the glory of God. If God is in your life, his glory is on your life. And then the brilliance of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter the house because of the glory and the brilliance of the Lord had filled the house. Y'all see that? All right. Now, here we go. Hold on. Go to the fourth verse. Watch this. The king, then the king and all the people, people offered a sacrifice before the Lord. Solomon offered a sacrifice. 22 oxen. I, I know, but I'm just trying to see as you listen. 22,000. Give it like that won't get God's attention. That's one of the reasons. And 120,000 sheep. That got God's attention. Y'all don't believe that, but it did. That's why God came to Solomon to ask me whatever you want. Because God, money wasn't a problem to Solomon. It wasn't to David. David taught his son how to interact with God with stuff. In this way, the king, listen, listen. In this way, the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. And the priest stood at the post ready for service. Look at, look at what he offered. Look, did God bless him to be the richest man? Now, you may look at the, just the animal, but God saw all that blood, which reminded him of his son. 22,000 oxen. Can you imagine the blood? Can you imagine the blood? 120,000 sheep. Can you imagine the blood? What did God uh, allow Jesus to die and shed for on our behalf? All that was reminding God of what Jesus was coming to do. And that's why God said, Solomon, ask me whatever you want. Because if money wasn't a problem, we see that right now. But see, that's the first thing we'll act because we want it. And James 4 said, you're going to consume it upon your lust. You got to be teachable in the area of finance. I remember a long time ago, I asked everybody to sign a, a paper. You shouldn't have to do that. Your words should be good enough. If you're going to work in the church, you need to be a tither. Didn't, didn't I say that? For those who are here, teachable. You got to have to be a tither, a giver. You got to be supportive in all the functions, so on and so on. So years had passed. I said, let me go back in and check. Only somebody stayed in the praise team with Tina and the kid. Everybody else had to sit down because wasn't nobody giving. What was God listening to that? Was, was he really listening? Now, they was up there falling out, shouting, the church shout. I used to go, Terrence, what I used to do? I used to do this. I said, when y'all get through, I'll preach. But right now, I don't do what you don't. But that ain't real. I knew it wasn't. I, I don't go back there checking to see who gives. But when the Holy Spirit told me to, and then, and then we only had two people up there. Why did it happen like that? Because everybody's not teachable in the area of finance. We, everybody's not teachable in marriage. We got to be teaching in every area that the Bible says. This is why so many messed up marriages because the word of God tells us how to be married. But we don't want that. We don't want that. Don't nobody want no counseling today. Well, you finna enter in just because you got a license don't mean you're a professional. But people got fishing license. You can't fish a lick. You got a driver's license. You can't drive. So how teachable are we? Are you argumentative? I'm finna close in a minute. Are you, do you get mad when somebody try to correct you? These signs are unteachable. So look at Solomon. He didn't have a problem in giving. And the only thing I'm saying, if you want God to bless you financially, then take the teaching and apply them in your life. I'm praying for money. You don't pray for money. You give. And see, it, it's sad. But moving along. Look, number, th number three, on, uh, I stopped at number two. Look for planned and teachable moments. If you look for opportunities to learn in every situation, you develop a teachable spirit. I've had people come in from a, a, a lot of large places 
And the guy came up to me afterward and said, I want to apologize. <laughs> he said, I'm from Arizona. We don't have any small churches there. All of them are pretty much mega churches. He said, I assume because this church was small, I wasn't going to get nothing. He said, I want to apologize. He looked me square in the face. He said, I, I didn't I ain't got this teaching at the church that I go to. We ain't heard this stuff. Thank you, man of God. I received what you told me, what, I, what the word was saying. And to popular belief, because the building is big, we think the teaching is right. No, no. And, uh, and see, I've had people that come here, God said they belong here. He said, they're not going to stay here because they don't think you can teach them. And God told me that. So Nathan, you know who I'm talking about. Then he messed you up. <laughs> That's why I had so much trouble, because he learned from him. God told me this person belong here, but they don't think you can teach them nothing. And I can't. They, he were right. I'm teaching from experience. I know what God has called me to do. I don't know my wife's job. If I go there and help, I'll do everything she said. I ain't going to do no further. I ain't going no further. Do this, do that. But that ain't the case in the churches. No. I ain't never tried to tell nobody their job. I go get my eyes checked, Tina tell me to do all this stuff. Have I ever questioned you when I went and got my eyes checked? Why do I get questioned all the time? You won't know the answer to that? Unteachable. When you start believing, all the questions stop. The questions come because you don't believe. Listen, number one, unteachable uh, 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 spirit, failure. You're going to keep failing until you become teachable. God don't, the world said you learn from failing. Jesus didn't fail. What did, what would Jesus have to learn if he had to fail? Let me show you how the world, the church have bought into this crap the world selling. Jesus, Jesus is our example, right? Not these people in the world. So the world telling us if you fail, that's good. Did Jesus fail? Telling you, I can't buy that crap they teach it because Jesus is our example, not the people in the world. Number two, our argumentative and defensive nature. Write down Proverbs 12 and 1, Proverbs 8. I'm going over these verses, and I'm, I'm going to quit because I don't, my time is far spent. We started a little late, but good. So number two, our argumentative and defensive nature. Those people aren't teachable. Th th number three, here go another one. A third uh, thing that the show people are unteachable, they isolate themselves and withdraw in the time of difficulty. They go in high. You know, no, no, don't do that. Number four, laziness. Unteachable. Person lazy, they unteachable. Four characteristics of a teachable spirit, humility. Number one, humility. Number two, graciously accept correction. And input. Three, seeking wise counsel in the time of discernment and difficulty or continued failure. Number four, submit to authority. There's a choice. Write this down. I'll leave you with this, and I pray that you meditate on this. There is a choice you make in everything. Is that true? Everything you do. So keep in mind that in the, in, in the end, the choice you make and I make makes you. You didn't become like that for no reason. The choices you made got you like that. It's the choices you made that made you. So when you choose to obey, they develop and helps you to have a teachable spirit. This, I ain't going no further. This is my message for today.